Lucian Grange, the most powerful man in the entire music industry. And news has just come in that the CEO of Universal Music Group is set to make more money in 2021 than every single songwriter did from the UK in 2019 from streaming and sales. But wait! Not only is he going to make more money than every single songwriter from the UK, he is set to do them all combined. That's Adele, Ed Sheeran, Paul McCartney, Elton John, Coldplay, and every single UK songwriter combined. Recently, UMG broke from their parent company Vivendi and floated on the stock market. And in doing so, this will net Lucian Grange up to $200 million as a transactional bonus. Make this clear, this is not an annual salary. This is a transactional bonus for the sale and the flotation of UMG. I gotta do it. Now, Tom Gray, founder of the Hashtag Broken Record campaign, tweeted recently that for an independent artist to make that much money in one year, they would need to have 180 billion streams. 180 billion streams. Now, to put that in context, the biggest streamer on the entirety of Spotify is Drake, with about 40-odd billion streams. That's nearly five times what Drake has done in his lifetime all in one year. Okay, so clearly this is not right. In fact, this is absolutely outrageous. But there are two separate issues here because Lucian is not an artist. Lucian is the CEO. He's the head of the largest, most powerful music industry company in the entire world. And this is a transactional bonus and this is not a wage. So let's have a look at how Lucian got to this point. Now, Lucian started at Universal in 1986, and in 2001, Lucian became head of Universal in the UK, but it wasn't until 2005 that he became head of Universal worldwide, nearly 20 years after he started. But it wasn't until 2011 that things really took a turn for the better, because in 2011, Lucian brokered a deal for Universal to buy EMI. Now, during the 60s and 70s, EMI was about as powerful as you could get, housing the likes of the Beatles, the Beach Boys, T-Rex, the Animals, Pink Floyd, and everybody else. But by 2011, they were really struggling, and Lucian brokered a deal for Universal to buy EMI. Now, this is the equivalent of of TikTok buying Facebook. Now, what this meant was that UMG now controls 40% of the market, something that had never been done before. And at the same time, there was a small Swedish startup called Spotify, run by Daniel Ek, that was branching out into streaming. Now, you have to remember, at this time, the music industry was pretty much on its knees with file sharing, illegal downloads, and a lot less people buying music. And Lucian really understood where Spotify was going. Whilst everyone said, no, we're not interested in streaming. This is the, this is not the future of the music industry. Lucian said, no, I think it is. And he went headfirst into streaming before everyone else. And at the same time, because he owned 40% or he controlled 40% of the market, it gave him the lion's share to go into those negotiations hard. Now you have to remember that Lucian has been in the music industry for over 40 years. He's seen the likes of the punk movement, rock, pop, and now hip hop. He understands that music is culture and he also has amazing ears for music. He understands the music industry and how music changes every couple of weeks. But more importantly, over the last 40 years, Lucian has understood how to expand the business, not just vertically, but horizontally. And so we need to look at what he's doing, what UMG do that we can take away as independent artists. Number one is UMG understand that every piece of music is an asset and every asset needs to be managed. Otherwise, the asset becomes becomes a liability. Therefore, he's looking for opportunities for music to be housed in places. So this isn't just streaming. This isn't just TV or Netflix. But this is also things like Peloton or TikTok or influencers. There's so many places that music is now housed and he's looking around saying, where can I put this music? Which you can do the same thing. Okay, maybe you're not gonna get your music on Peloton, but there's plenty of opportunities to house your music in different places and get people to use your music and get it heard. 
but are you doing the right things for that to happen? And then number two is he's attaching his music or his assets to brands or videos or merch or even tickets. He's figuring out not only how he can get the music in places, but how he can get a return of investment around that and around the fan base, which is very, very smart. So you've got many, many artists who might not be big on streaming, but at the same point, they might go and make a lot of money on touring. Did you know, for example, that the Foo Fighters made the same amount of money in 2019 as Drake? Except the Foo Fighters made their money from touring, whereas Drake made a lot of his money from streaming. Then number three, he's looking for new markets. So not only places for the music to be housed, but territories as well. We've seen the emergence of Korea. We've seen the emergence of Africa. Even in India and the Philippines, music is getting bigger and there's more opportunities worldwide. And he is at the forefront of that. The thing with Lucian is he's made himself the most powerful man in the music industry in amongst a load of very powerful people. I mean, after all, can you name the head of Warner or the CEO of Parlophone Records? Probably not. Now, at this point, you might think I'm sticking up for Lucian. However, I see this as two separate issues. On one hand, you've got the CEO and the builder, the leader of a powerhouse company that out of many weeks of the year will have nine out of 10 in the top 10 charts. Think about that, nine out of 10 in the top 10. You only get that because you've built a powerhouse company that invests back into to artists, which is a great thing. However, it very much highlights the issue here, which is, one more time we're talking about it, artists and songwriters are getting the scraps from the table. I'm actually not against the architect of a 40 or $50 billion company, a company that turned over $8 billion this year with $1.5 billion in profit, I'm not against the architect and leader of that company getting what they deserve. The issue I have is it's at the expense of the artists who've built this company. My issue is the structure of the music industry and how the money gets funneled down through all the middlemen and women into the artists last. And the artists who are creating the art aren't getting looked after. Think of it like this. If you go on Spotify, I don't really listen to the top 100 artists on Spotify, maybe two. I might listen to Linkin Park and John Mayer who are in the top 100. Other than that, I don't really listen to the top 100. However, my £10, my $16 that goes to Spotify goes to the major labels and it doesn't go to the artists that I listen to. So if I listen to you, for example, in fact, think of this. If I listen to a standard album of yours, which might contain 12 songs, if I listen to your album in its entirety three times a day, every single day for an entire month, you would get $4 out of my $16 that I paid Spotify. Now that clearly is not right. Meanwhile, the music industry is controlled by billionaire gatekeepers like Daniel Ek, who's worth a reported 4.5 billion, or Merck Mercuriadis, who's reportedly worth 1.5, or Len Blatokvich, however you pronounce his name, who's worth 41 billion, the owner of Warner Music. Clearly, there is a disconnect between the people who are controlling the music industry and the people who are creating the art for us to listen to. We live in a time where a company like Universal Music Group can generate $8 billion in one year with $1.5 billion in profit. And yet songwriters are still getting scraps from the table completely unfair. Anyway, I saw the headline. I wanted to update you guys. I think it's absolutely crazy that one person in the music industry can generate in one year what every single UK songwriter generated combined from sales and streaming in an entire year in 2019. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know what you think. There's probably going to be a lot of anger and hate, but leave your comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you do me a favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. And more importantly, just come and be a part of this community because I'm very proud of what we're building. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.